So I'm here with Dr. Blake Curtis, and I have the privilege of uh, interviewing him. So Blake, let's just start with Dr. Curtis, I should say. Yes, sir. Let's start out by just kind of introducing yourself. What's your background? So my, my background is in governance, risk, and compliance. Been doing IT auditing quite a while as well. But what I really focus on is just the research science is about developing cybersecurity expertise in IT auditors. Wow. Okay, that's very interesting. And I know that you did a study recently, yes. so that's what we want to talk about. I want right. to hear all about it because you're in this study, you're talking about the next generation of cybersecurity right. auditors. So, uh, what? First of all, what's the name of the study, and what prompted you to do this study? All right. So, the name of the study is creating the next generation cybersecurity auditor. What really prompted me to do this was that in 2017, 2017 we had an Equifax breach, right? Mm -hmm. Affected over 147 million people. Yep. But what a lot of people don't understand is three months prior to that, they were actually audited by okay. before. So the question is, did the auditors misidentify the vulnerability that actually affected us? Okay. So that got me interested. I'm like, okay, well, do auditors have a hard time interpreting technical evidence? Mm. So are they more focused on the diagnostic aspect or they're more focused on, on the implementing side? So sure. we conducted an audit. Um, wow. We conducted a, a survey where we actually had 216 participants. Wow. Over 800 people tried to get in there, but we had some eligibility criteria. Sure, sure. So what we really focused on was what, what were those next generation skills? What certifications improve performance? Okay. What we identified is that you have to have a mix of both diagnostic skills as well as implementation skills. Okay. But if you just solely came from an audit background, they were not actually interpreting the evidence right. They were missing the same controls that resulted in breaches. Because they lacked the skills necessary in order to come with, up with the correct finding. Correct. And that also goes back to like the years of experience fallacy. We think that as we get older, there's more years, you actually perform. What our, what our research actually found was the confidence actually went up as you got older. Okay. But we actually overconfident because they were the lower performers. Okay. So what we then said, okay, well, what is actually improving their performance? So it was the people who had a CISA certification, ah. but when they missed it with Microsoft and AWS, mm -hmm. and it came from both implementing and diagnostic backgrounds, I uh -huh. said, okay, well, this is the next generation of auditors now. Okay. Well, that's a nice plug. The people that had a CISA certification fared better. Right. Than this God. Okay. Right. Well, and speaking of years of experience, you also distinguish between years of experience and years of exposure. Right. Help us understand that. So years of exposure is sim simply just being in a role for a long time, but there's an assumption that you're learning more. Okay. You're actually like not learning more. Like if you think about when you were in high school and you went through 12th grade the first time, but there was okay. a few other people who failed, right? Sure. By the definition, they're more experienced. Okay. But if you think about from a layman's term too, with people like in Amazon or Facebook, mm -hmm. have half the amount of experience as everybody else, but mm -hmm. they're performing better. Sure. So what we're saying here is like just living your time on earth, you're not becoming more competent. Mm -hmm. What we have to focus is on, on the job description. Uh, what, is li what are listed on the job task? And okay. stop subjectively looking at resumes. Give them a competency exam as a part of the hiring process. That way, if they fail or do good, you're not just saying, hey, we're sorry, we're not going to choose you. Sure. Here's the areas that you're weak in. Come apply with us next year. That's more equitable hiring. Very so we say experience has to be quantifiable. I need to see what you're doing. I need to be able to see it. And there's okay. a difference between theoretical knowledge as well as practical skill. So companies should be hiring based on years of exposure and not necessarily years of experience. Right. Now, there, there's a the thing too, like what is a year of experience? If you, mm -hmm. if you break it down, there's 8,760 hours okay. in there, right? But the average person only has 2,080 hours a year, mm -hmm. which is not even a quarter of experience. Yeah. It would take you four years to get one year of experience. Interesting. But even out of an eight-hour time span, most participants says, look, we only perform three or four hours with the task mm -hmm. on our job description. Yeah. So by that, you only have 1,080 sure. hours. So the years of experience concept is actually not sustainable, and it's going to create a workforce gap if we keep subjectively looking at resumes and we keep prompting this because there's just no science behind it. And it, is that concept, in your opinion, only applies to the cybersecurity world, no. the IT world, or are you suggesting this is overall? This is going to apply to everything. If you think about people in engineering, NASA, and science, the way that they become certified is they have to see people do it, right? Mm -hmm. We're in an unregulated profession, mm -hmm. which means that these certifications are not backed by state and federal regulation. Sure. Now, things like in engineering, health, health, as well as CPAs, they're backed by state and federal regulation. Sure. For example, my wife is a pharmacist. If she loses her job, I'm going to have to pick up a second one. Sure. <laughs> I lose half my certifications. I'm good. I know people like you and other people, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. But um, that then best to differ is what are we doing to make sure that competency is going to keep evolutionizing out through time? And then 
how are our children and their children be able to break in the workforce if we keep using years of experience oh, as that, a validator for knowledge? Absolutely. I like. I love it. I love it. I've never thought about it that way, but that makes sense. You got to have the organization, uh, if they're hiring based on years of experience, they can have a level of trust right. when they uh, when they hire that particular employee, if you will. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And I use that word trust because I want to kind of pivot a little bit right. and talk about digital trust. So this yeah. is something new. Well, in your opinion, is this new? This whole concept that we've been talking about in the business community, digital trust, is this new? I don't think it's new. I think our awareness of it is new. It's just okay. like, you know, a lot of technologies, we have this concept where it's called implement first, think later, right? Uh -huh. So we have a lot, of new a lot of new technologies come across there, but we're not really thinking about the data as well as our consumers, the metadata. Sure. Are we connecting enough of it? Sure. Are we enforcing things based on that as well? And I, I don't really think it's new, but we have to start pushing more to the left. Sure. Things privacy by design. What are those controls? How do those correlate to other industry frameworks and build that into your secure system development lifecycle? And notice I didn't say secure software, uh -huh. secure system. Okay, explain that more. What, what What's the difference? So the difference there, you're most of just focusing on applications, right? Okay. But with the emergence of technologies like Industry 4.0 and so forth, mm -hmm. you got artificial intelligence, you got mm -hmm. cognitive networks, you got IoT. Sure. Those typical things are not really included as software as a service or applications, right? Sure. So how are you going to build in controls? How are you going to develop an intake process to consider those, protect the enterprise, but also be transparent with the customer? Sure. So I know this is a big question, but you, you have a... Uh, you have a lot of expertise. So how would you, if you were consulting an organization, how would you, in maybe 25 words or less, consult them on how to achieve digital trust amongst their employees, mm -hmm. amongst their customers, amongst their vendors and investors? What are some of the first steps that they need to take to do so? I would focus on the tasks that are actually needed to implement an audit. Okay. I think we get so wrapped up on the technology itself that we don't consider what is the competency required require for IT auditors and implementers? Sure. I'll also hybridize those teams. I wouldn't keep those siloed. Mm -hmm. And I would put more focus on the cyber legal advisor. This is a, a new profession, uh -huh. but we need people who can formalize these contracts. We need people who can start focusing on the indemnity clauses as well as building in the requirements in this contract and being more visible to okay. the customer because it's written so esoteric, it's so technical, that someone who doesn't do what me and you do are just looking at it and just click and check. Sure. That's a risk. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting. Well, Dr. Curtis, I appreciate your time, your expertise. I don't think we had enough time here, so we have to do it again. But right. uh, thank you for sharing your time and your expertise with the uh, ISACA world. So thank let's you. talk soon. Thank you. All right.